go. All right. So um, I just want to take a minute to introduce our amazing, amazing uh, maker local to the U.S. Again, this is Ocarina Fest, but it's Ocarina Fest U.S., meaning it's the, U the United States Ocarina Festival. And one thing I really like to do during um, Ocarina Festivals is really highlight the makers of um, ocarinas in the U.S. Now, due to, and, and in the greater Americas as well. Now, due to a lot of different schedules, we were only able to do the makers that had this time slot. And I just want to say thank you to Songbird because they are literally so reliable. <laughs> They're so reliable. They said, yeah, we're busy, but we'll put together an awesome presentation. And we'll also be able to like even like show some of our ocarinas and some of uh, what we do. Um, I know that there's a special topic this year that was requested by the community. They were asking, um, what is a good couple of strategies for repairing ocarinas or like if there's anything that can do with a broken ocarina? And you guys can talk about that if you want, but there's also the option of just sharing your ocarinas and just sharing your story, what um, your ocarinas are all about and everything in regards to that. So join me, everybody. Um, let me enable chat first <laughs> so that people can talk. Um, I don't know why it started to do that recently. It's just been by default turning off, but here we go. Okay, so chat is working. Please test it out for me to make sure. Hello. Hey, welcome back. It's good to see you. Uh, so, um, yeah, uh, let's join me in giving Songbird a gigantic welcome. This is Eric from Songbird Ocarina, and we are so lucky and so happy to have him here today. I'm going to go ahead and let him take it away. He's an awesome, awesome person. So hello, Eric. Hello, Songbird. Welcome to our festival. Hello, Nicholas. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for having us again. And yeah, I would just like to start by once again thanking, thanking all of the organizers of the Global Ocarina community and, of course, Nicholas himself, who put in so much work and effort to produce this free online Ocarina festival that so many of us can participate in. So, you know, everyone, although it is free, there are donations. So if you want to help support the Global Ocarina community, send over a few dollars. I'm sure they, they'd appreciate that support as well. But yes, everyone. My name is Eric. This is Songbird Ocarina. We are here in front of the famous Ocarina tree at Songbird. Ocarinas really do grow on trees. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Durian Songbird himself is actually living in, at the King Richard's Fair Renaissance Festival in Massachusetts right now. He's there for a couple months selling Ocarinas at the Ren Fair. So if you wanna, if you wanna see Mr. Songbird, stop by Massachusetts. But for now, I'm home alone here at Songbird Ocarina. So. Uh, yeah, normally I might play some duets with Durian, but he's not here. So today I thought just for those of you who may not have seen the process of how an ocarina is made or what we do here at Songbird Ocarina, I'd just love to give you guys a tour of the workshop. And if you do have any questions, feel free to ask. And yeah, let's let's see the workshop. So the life of an ocarina. So ocarinas. They can either be crafted 100% like formed from hand for very unique custom ocarinas. That might often be how someone might do it. If you want like, oh, I want to make a, I want to make a ocarina that's shaped like Pikachu, then yeah, you can, you can make your own little Pikachu ocarina. But if you're going to make a consistent design, a consistent model, then generally ocarinas are going to be made by molds. And yes, thank you. I love our wall as well. But so they're made from molds. So what we would do is we take a a basic form. So I just prepared one example for here. This is a this is a, like a shell. It's called a shanka. This is a traditional Indian conch shell that they use in like ritualistic performances. It's like they use it like a horn. So Durian Zombard, he thought, hey, that would be a cool ocarina shape. So we got this original form. This is what we actually cast the mold from. So this is literally just like one of those Shanka shells. And you can see like the finished results. We made this ocarina model we called the conscious. It's cast from this exact same form. And it's kind of just like a meditative ocarina. So any any form that you have, if you think, hey, that would be a cool ocarina model, you can make, a, make your own little mold and start pumping them out. So that model, we just released it beginning of last year. It is relatively new. But yeah, after you get the mold, which is made from plaster, 
I'm going to show you guys some of our molds. And actually, this is this is interesting here because this is one of our this is one of our newest models. This here, this little mushroom. This is actually a design that was made for us by I'm sure you know her, Ocarina Caro, Carolyn. She makes beautiful silver ocarinas in Quebec. I also work with her. And we've been wanting to make a mushroom ocarina for a long time. So Carolyn, she actually made this for us. This is this is the original design that was molded by Carolyn. And we've been making these mushroom ocarinas. So you might've seen some pictures. We haven't got it official on our website yet. We are selling them at King Richard's Fair currently. But you know, who doesn't love mushrooms, right? I love mushrooms, I put mushrooms on my pizza every day. I know pineapples is a little more controversial, but who doesn't love mushrooms, right? So we've been making some some mushroom molds. So you can see here, so you get the little form of the mushroom. This is uh, another mushroom mold. There you go. So right now we've only got two mushroom molds, which means we can only make two mushrooms per day, which is, it's more than one mushroom a day, but we need more. But yeah, so once you've got the mold for an ocarina, here you can see in our workshop, we've got just like so many molds lined up. I'm gonna switch to, how do I switch my camera? There it is. All right. Um, no, it doesn't like that, huh? I had to switch my camera to the alternate view, but it looks like it doesn't want that. And now I cannot restart my video. If you need to take a minute to okay. turn it on and off. It's like, uh, am I back? <clears throat> no, um, your video says off. Let me. Uh... Yeah, I'm getting an error. It says you cannot start your video because the host has disabled it. Okay. It's like, okay, I'm back. Oh, oh okay. Sorry about Perfect. That. Now it is letting us show the front camera. There we go. I don't know why it didn't want me to switch my camera view. So here we are. So you can see this here is a dragon tooth mold. You can see the basic form there. We've got the over here at Ocarina of Time mold. So basically the mold, way these molds will work is we have a, a liquid slip clay. That is liquid. Here we go. So we've just got this liquid clay and we'll pour this clay into the mold and then we need to basically time it and keep notes of details because the way this is going to work is after we pour the clay into the plaster mold plaster it's very a very absorbent material so it's just going to suck out the moisture out of that clay so quickly but over time it's going to leave behind a shell so the longer it's in there the thicker the shell is going to be and ultimately it's going to leave behind just a hollow form of of that shape. But the tricky thing is when you're trying to make consistent ocarinas, you usually want them to be in the same key, right? People they usually like the key of C or you know, sometimes if you're more like into like orchestral music or something, you might like B flat, whatever, but usually we're aiming for a certain key. So if we're aiming for the key of C, that means we wanna get a consistent thickness of the wall. So we need to time it usually for like bigger ocarinas, Dragon Tooth or Ocarina of Time, we might leave it in for about six to seven hours but it also can vary depending on humidity. So like here in LA, we had a heat wave a few weeks ago. It was like hundred degrees for a couple of weeks. So because of that, the moisture is gonna absorb, come out a lot more quickly. And so we need to keep it in for less amount of time. So basically the way the physics will work out is depending on the thickness of that wall, let's say if the, you can imagine it's the same external shape, but if the wall is really thick, there's gonna be less actual internal volume inside. So effectively, the ocarina is going to be smaller and it's going to produce a higher pitch. It's going to be in a higher key. If the wall gets really thin, even though it's the same external size, there's a greater internal volume. And so it's going to have a deeper, more bass, more resonant tone. So we're aiming for that consistency to try to get it always in the same key. And, you know, sometimes we do target different keys and then we need to play with that, that thickness. So to get the resulting pitch we're aiming for. But that's basically how the molds are going to work. Now, after we put them in the molds. When you take them out, we're just gonna get the basic forms. So you can see here, we've got, we've got some navvies. Okay, so we made a bunch of dragon eggs. Here's why. 
because I told Durian, I said, hey, Durian, there's this new show called The House of the Dragon that's coming. And I said, hey, people might want dragon eggs again. Because remember Game of Thrones was popular before the last season when nobody liked it anymore? I said, hey, maybe people might like dragon eggs again. So I said, hey, let's make some dragon eggs. So I made a bunch of dragon eggs, but guess what? We've been, we've been too busy and we never actually finished making these. So I think we might've missed the boat on the House of the Dragon hype. I think the show's already halfway over, but maybe, maybe we'll finish a couple dragon eggs before the show ends. So that's just the basic forms. What else have we got here? Okay, so over here you can see we've got some mushrooms, trying to pump out these mushrooms, more knobbies, right? So these haven't got even any voicing or anything. This is just the basic hollow forms, how they're gonna come out. But the next step, is we're gonna actually make the, the voicing. This is the most delicate part of the ocarina. So you can see here, this is an ocarina of time. No tuning anything yet, but right here, this is right here. We call this like the voicing or the sound hole. And right, that's the slot that you'll go into. But basically the way an ocarina functions physically is the air, when you blow through, it's going to have to split on this little ridge, this little ramp. So you probably can't see because this is a this is a camera and human eye is superior. But maybe oh, you can kind of see there. So you can see if you look through the slot hole, basically the it needs to perfectly split along the middle of that ramp. So basically, half the air will go above and half the air will go below. So you can see you should see like half of uh, the darkness of the clay and half of the light of the air above the clay. So if it's perfectly split then it's gonna make a sound. If it's not, it's not. So you need that really perfect alignment. If it's just a little bit off, ocarina is not even gonna make a sound. And also the proportions of this, this hole is very important. If it gets too big also, it's not gonna make a sound. If it gets too small, it's gonna choke. So you kind of just need to develop a sense of the relative proportions to the size of any given ocarina. Uh, Matt Hopwood asks, do you have a triple harmony in progress? Hold on, the message disappears. Do you have a triple harmony in progress or a mold? I own one and I would love to see what either look like early mid process. Um, I'll see if I can find one for you. There's, uh, we tried, we we're actually trying to make like a quadruple base mold at one point and uh, it's, it's, uh, it's not easy. It did not turn out kind of an abandoned project. See if I can find one later. But yeah, so that's the the voicing. It's the most essential element. That's like when you're learning to make an ocarina. That's the trickiest part. That's what most people struggle with at first. Is how can I even get a sound out of this thing? And usually, it's just getting those perfect proportions and physics on the voicing. Okay, so after you can get the voicing hole just right, the next step is you're gonna make like the tuning holes. So you can see, got a batch here that's already got. Got some holes drilled out. So tuning, it's actually, it's relatively easy compared to making the voicing. It's pretty much just, you know, we kind of know roughly the, the size that the holes should be, just from experience. So we'll like have the basic approximate sizes, but we need to make adjustments because every ocarina is different. Every ocarina is unique. There's always different factors. It might be a little bit thicker, a little bit thinner. So we can't just like count on everything being perfect. We can't just pump it out like a factory. But everyone needs to be hand tuned and adjusted. So literally, we just you know play the note. If the next we open the next hole, if it's too sharp, if the note is so high, then oh shoot, that hole is too big. We're gonna need to fill it in, which is not as easy as making it bigger. So usually we try to go smaller and then get bigger. So if we're flat, then we just open up the hole a little bit more, move on, and go up and up the scale, and hopefully we can reach reach the top end, get all the way to the highest note without anything crazy happening. But Ocarinas are very anomalous, so sometimes there's an issue and we don't even we don't even know what's up. There's something something strange going inside. We just have to throw it out. So yes, yeah, so that's the tuning. Okay, and now oh here's the side side field trip right here. So we're gonna take a field trip to the this is the synesthesia ocarina of light technology table. So this is one of our most popular ocarinas. Is the ocarina of light? I'm sure you've probably seen videos, but if you're curious, this is the actual hardware. This is a 
Zika part that we, you know, we're not like computer programmers, but we worked with another company to develop this vision. And basically this computer board, it has a microphone. And what it does is it detects the pitch of the note. And depending on the, the frequency, the note that the microphone hears, the computer board will translate that and produce a different color light for each note. So this is the actual computer board that you'll see in a synesthesia ocarina of light. I, I don't know if this one is charged, I might actually respond. Let's see. Ah, ah, ah. Nope, it doesn't want to light up. Ooh. Needs more charging maybe. But yeah, there's actual little light there. So yeah, I was trying to charge this, but put him on his charging base. Yeah, so it's, there it is, he lights up. He's still red, that's why he's not singing for me. Still charging, he needs to be green. But that's the actual circuit board, if you're curious how those work. All right, so moving on, after an ocarina is completely tuned, then we're gonna leave them to dry. So here you can see we have all these drying racks. These are ocarinas that are just chilling out. They've all been tuned. You can see we've got some of our little mushrooms here. Mushrooms by Carolyn. But yes, yeah, so we need to leave them to dry usually for a good few days. And the reason is if there's still any residual moisture in the clay then if you try to fire it in the kiln that moisture it's going to try to evaporate out and basically it's going to cause the ocarina to explode in the kiln which we do not want matt asks are the mushrooms on sale yet they are on sale at king richard's fair in massachusetts they are not on sale on our website but after the fair ends then we will be stocking them on our website as well for now they're, they're exclusive but yes yeah, so that is uh these guys, these guys are ready to be bisque, actually. So after they dry out, then we'll put them in the kiln for the bisque. So I can show you guys the kiln room now. And yeah, side note, as we're tuning the ocarinas, we tune them. I'm sure you know the basic like frequency standard is usually A equals 440 hertz. Some Asian countries, they might set it to 442, but most of the world uses 440. But when we're tuning the ocarinas in the workshop, we set A equals 415. And that's because when we fire them, obviously they're gonna shrink, the pitch is going to rise. So if we set A equals 415 while we're tuning them as wet clay, then after we fire them, it should naturally rise up to about 440. Uh, yeah, so here we are in the kiln room. You can see we've got a couple of kilns, nothing in there right now. So the first stage is we'll do what's called a bisque, which is literally just like firing the clay for the first time to harden it. So it's just gonna come out after you fire it as this white, it's still porous. It's, you can't really, can't enjoy it at this stage because it's still a dusty, but it is solid at this point. After we fire it, it's, it's called the bisque. You can see also the ocarina of time has been bisked. So that's the first firing. After we fire for the first time, we're gonna start applying one or more layers of glazes. So you can see like here's an ocarina of time. He's got, I think we were trying something different, just some different patterns. Right, so we just might apply whatever. Oh, here's a, here's a sad story. Sometimes the ocarinas are touching in the kiln when you graze them, you get twins. So here we have, I guess these are, these are fraternal twins, not identical twins. But if they accidentally touch in the kiln, they're gonna join. And then it's, uh, it's hard to play one of these guys. Fraternal twin ocarinas. So I gotta make sure they're not they're not touching the kiln or that's gonna happen and that's not good. But yeah, so you can see here we have like a million different glaze colors. These are all of our glazers. I just saw no, oh, that's a different type of double chamber. Oh, okay. Yeah, so if you're curious about this, this is um, a different kind of double chamber. Yeah, that's, uh, I wonder if you can find a, a practical application of this. Probably not. You know, it may be like, um, I guess this could be your, like your base chamber, it's the muse. And this will be your, this will be your uh, soprano chamber, right? Chamber two. You know, that might actually work. That I actually like that idea. Wow. You know, because actually I've had people suggest that, oh, why don't you just like do, do those two opinions together? Well, there you go. If you want to let us know, I don't know if it's for sale, but maybe we'll sell it. 50% off, two for the price of one. Okay, so, but yeah, so we'll apply just usually 
a basic base, a little mix. And then afterwards, after the first firing, then we might apply a different like luster or metallic finish. So obviously the Oak Ring of Time, it has a platinum band. Um, right here, you can see we've got some just interesting Oak Rings with a different luster applied on top. So you can see this is not just not just a glaze, but on top of the glaze and a second firing, it's got this unique sort of iridescent luster pattern. And that's gonna come from an additional like luster that we apply on top of the surface of the glaze. So yeah, there might be multiple firings all to just uh, play with the appearance, get a little bit more fun. And yeah, there was a question asked, I guess there's a topic I didn't know, but there's a topic about like fixing your green as Nicholas mentioned. So yeah, uh, with the kiln, if you, if you don't have access to kiln, then you know, there's other ways, but you can always try to, honestly, if your ocarina breaks, if you want to fix it, you can literally just glue it together if the voicing isn't compromised. I've broken ocarinas and literally just applied some super glue, stick them back together. What I like to do is cover up a broken ocarina with art. So if you break it, you could do like that Japanese thing where they put gold on it, right? Or you can like, Sometimes I just put some paint, try to cover it up, like draw some vines or something with the paint, try to make it look pretty. It can still look nice. That's one way. If you do have a kiln, then you can also try to reseal it. Oh, kintsugi, that's what it's called, thank you. You can also just try to reseal it again with a glaze because the glaze too will bond again. And you can like essentially fuse it back together. But yeah, it's, uh, it's not easy. Usually if you break an ocarina, you might want to just get a new one but again yeah i have like re reforged ocarina art pieces usually i cover a breakage with art i did the same thing on my car i scratched on a pillar i just put some art on the side pretend it was intentional so but yeah that's the uh, that's basically how an ocarina comes to its final stage again like some of them might have a more complex process right you can see there's a little Nava here, like this guy too, we need to still install the lights, right? Opening up time. This guy, he's still into his metallic band. So it can take a few, few different firings before the Ocarina is fully formed. But that is basically the entire process. That is the story of how Ocarina is born. So yes, that is... That's basically... Uh, I want to present to you guys today. There's no durian here for me to play a duet with you. So, but if anyone did have any further questions just about the process of how an ocarina is made or songbird ocarina in general, then we can have just a little Q and A question. If anyone had anything you'd like to ask. Give you a give you a minute if you want to type up any further questions. Oh, do you have any horror stories of something going wildly wrong during the making process? Oh, okay. Let me think about that. I'll, I might tell you a story in a minute. But first of all, someone did ask about our wall, so I'll just answer about that. So yes, yeah, so we have like this magical mural. So the way this happened is we have a Thai restaurant down the street where Dorian Zombrod usually goes to eat. I go there too sometimes. And at the Thai restaurant, there's like this beautiful mural with like these birds. And Dorian, he told the owner of the Thai restaurant that he's friends with, hey, that's beautiful, like who made that? And it was like the nephew of the owner of the Thai restaurant. So Dorian's like, hey, let's get him over here and let's paint a mural at Zombrod Ocarina. So the nephew of the Thai restaurant guy, he came and painted this beautiful mural all over our front room. Yeah, we've got like a little little fairy. She's playing the synesthesia opening of light right there. So yes, I also love this mural. Okay, I'm still thinking of my best horror story, ocarina making horror story. But before I get to that one, are Zelda ocarina still the most sold ones? So it's... If you want to know our our number one best-selling ocarina, in recent years has actually become the strawberry ocarina. And I believe that is a result of Freckle Zelda. Thank you, Freckle Zelda, for making strawberry number one. Our second most best-selling ocarina is the plastic 
Kokiri version, Ocarina of Time, past like seven hole, this guy. And I think that's just because, you know, we don't all have money. Some people want an economical start of Ocarina and that's great. So this one is now second after Strawberry. Our third most popular Ocarina is actually not ours, but um, recently like we'd seen feedback that some people want like more professional sort of looking classic Ocarina. So again, I. We asked Focalink if they can make us a black, black plastic book granite. They don't usually make black, but Focalink is yeah, like, yeah, we'll make you like them, but you have to buy a thousand. So we thought, oh, that's a big investment, but we got a thousand plastic book granites. And guess what? They, they all sold in like a year. So I guess people really like black plastic book granites. So this guy has become number three since we commissioned the black plastic book from Focalink. And after that, yes, that's when Zelda really takes off and our ocarina of time, our standard ocarina of time, this guy for the more, for people who are not under budget. I think this is our number four best-selling Ocarina overall. But yeah, this, this Zelda Ocarina, it's, uh, it's always a top seller. Good question, okay. What kind of Ocarina do you offer for educators? Nicholas asks, so um, for those who are interested in like Ocarina education, like I know there, there are people who are interested in promoting Ocarina in schools. I know Nicholas himself has been doing that and trying to even start Ocarina educational programs in schools, which is a fabulous idea. And we totally support that hundred percent. So if there's anyone who is interested in like spreading Ocarina education, then we're definitely open to helping you supply Ocarina to schools or whatever, whatever your plan is to get you like a really reduced like wholesale rate. So we can definitely, any, anyone who's interested in Ocarina education, I know, Matt Hopwood, I believe you're also into Ocarina education. So if anyone, anyone in that world, then yeah, we're always happy to help out. I mean, usually with schools, they just want like probably plastic Ocarina is best. But yes, we do, we do offer that to Ocarina educators. Okay. Oh, a lot of questions. Will you get any more base forte triples from Focalink? Um, you know what? We might actually have one lying around. Message, message me later, I'll get back to you. I think we might have one, we might have one for you, Matt, if you need it. Okay. There's a lot of questions, all right. I have a sweet potato opening of time replica from you guys that has five holes from over 10 years ago. I talked to someone on Reddit, recently his pendant style opening of time replica had six holes. It's a way to check the different version variations. I've been curious what year mine was made. I'm getting my kids started in the Kokiri version of Ocarina and Replica. I have more kids and look for Kokiri edition of Ocarina or Ocarina. Is that in the works? Okay, so first question. Yeah, so the Sweet Potato Ocarina of Time Replica. There have been many variations over the decades. That's one of our like oldest, most original models. I'm sure many of us who first encountered Songbird, it was from these old Nintendo Power magazines back in the day. Hey, we still have the original ad right here. So yeah, you might've seen this in the Nintendo Power magazine, a little stick hole. Ocarina of Time. So yeah, it's gone through various stages. Sometimes it had five holes, sometimes it had six holes. And what exactly year or decade did you have that holes? I've only been at Songbird for five years, so I can't answer further back than five years. And yeah, unfortunately, I don't know if we can track, probably Durian Songbird himself doesn't really remember how, how those variations went over the decades. It's been a while, but um, that's a good question. Maybe we should get like a serial number so we can identify it. And do we have a Kokiri edition of a fairy ocarina in the works, if you mean like a plastic fairy ocarina. Unfortunately not, we do not have plans for that. Okay, I'm gonna get back to this question about a horror story of ocarina making. I've been trying to think of one, something going wildly wrong during the making process. There's so many things that can go wrong in the making process. Just in general, like at any stage, anything anything can happen, even when you're glazing it. If you accidentally fill in a little bit of glaze, even in the sound hole, it can block it and glaze is like so strong, so solid, you can't really clear it out. You could lose a whole ocarina, it could be the most beautiful ocarina, but if you accidentally like block the voicing, like that's it, it's game over. So yeah, any at any point in the stage, you know, you could make a beautiful ocarina and then you accidentally drop it right but like put so much into it and it's dead so a lot of things that can go wrong 
for me personally, okay, I'll just tell you a personal sad story of when I was making ocarina. So this was a custom ocarina I was making as a, a gift for someone. And it was actually, uh, you know, uh, what's that guy's name? KK Slider from Animal Crossing. Okay, I never played Animal Crossing myself, but I know that he liked Animal Crossing. So I, he liked KK Slider. So I thought, oh, I'll make him a, a little KK Slider ocarina for, for his birthday. So I was making the little, the little guy's head and you know, it was fine, it was coming out. But I started, when I was doing the glazing, I glazed it and I, I put like a, a black glaze on his ears, but it was actually like a black underglaze. So for one thing, it came out like kind of crackled. And then after I glazed it, I also realized like, wait a minute, does, does KK Slider actually have black ears? I thought the dogs have black ears. But when I actually looked at a pic of, picture of KK Slider afterwards, I was like, oh shoot, his ears are also white. This is a problem. So now he had black ears, but it was KK Slider. And glaze, it's not just like paint. You can't just like put white glaze on top of black. It's already black. You can't just, can't just go over it. And also something else that happened is when I glazed it, actually some of the glaze had pulled down and filled up one of the fingering holes. So not only was his ears black, but one of the fingering holes was like totally filled in with glaze. So it can't even play. So basically what I had to do is we have like a drumming station. So, yeah, you can see like this is a Dremel. You can get like different different bits. We have different like sizes and these things are pretty, pretty powerful. So, but again, glaze is even more powerful. So I tried like drilling through, drilling through that hole, drilling, drilling, drilling. And Durian and Sombra, he didn't think I could get through. He's like, you're not gonna be able to get through that hole. But I just, I kept going and I pierced through. I was able to open up the hole again that was filled with the glaze. And yeah, eventually I was able to open up that hole again. But then the problem with the black glaze, again, I can't just put white glaze on top. So I had to actually find an acrylic paint that matched the exact color of the white. From a craft store, I painted his ears white again. And then on top of that, I had to put a sealant because for it to be glossy, it's also matched and after it was finished, you almost couldn't tell that I failed and I made his ears black originally. So it turned out I was able to save it. But yeah, I had to even to like refire it and fix the broken hole. I think I fired that guy like four times. Eventually he survived and he did make it out as a as a gift. So for me, that was the probably the most horrific adventure I had trying to make an ocarina. Oh, KK Slider dyed his hair once. I didn't know. Okay. All right, I believe I'm all caught up on the questions now. Was there any final questions before we close off for today? Last call. Okay, if no more questions, oh, did someone just, I thought I heard something, Nicholas? Yeah, I just really wanna say thank you guys for coming out here, you guys know that songbird is literally probably the biggest maker of ocarinas in the u.s just like has a lot of um you know reputation and presence and they're very reliable um whenever uh, i have had any experiences from them i've always really enjoyed the ocarinas that i've played with them so um i really appreciate it and thank you for answering my question about the um educators um ocarina program um, at Songbird. I really, really appreciate that, Eric. Yeah, well, thank you. Thank you so much again for having us, Nicholas. And everyone, thank you for participating, for joining and seeing our workshop. Any questions, you, know, you can always reach us on Instagram. Probably the easiest place for, to respond, like we can respond from. We're on Facebook too, but honestly, sometimes I don't see the Facebook messages. I don't know what's up. But contact yes. us on Instagram, email us, give us a call. And we'd love to continue supporting and sharing mm -hmm. openings with the world. Like at Sombert Opening, we really believe in just like magic, magic and fun and enjoying music, feeling the music more than anything else. Like even like something I appreciate about, about Durian Sombert himself is sometimes I just have a crazy idea and it may not be profitable from a business standpoint. He's probably going to lose his money, but he has a passion. He's like, I'm going to make this crazy green and he just does it. And it's because he believes in he believes in music, he believes in magic, and he wants he wants to have fun with music. So even even for during like it's not just about making money, it's not just a business, but 
we really we love what we do i love what i do this is my dream job guys right i'm probably never leaving so we we love ocarinas i know you guys love ocarinas too and we're, we're so happy to to share this event with you so thank you again nicholas and global yeah. ocarina community for hosting this event everyone please tune into the rest of the panels this weekend i'll try to tune into when i can and we'll go ahead and close off here then we really thank appreciate you, so you Eric. Thank you so, so much. In the chat, please show Eric your appreciation. And if you don't mind, follow Songbird Ocarina on Instagram and also follow them on Facebook or wherever you do social media. Look them up on YouTube. They um, post regularly on Instagram. I've seen a lot of their pictures. They have a lot of pictures up at uh, uh, King Ren F uh, Fair right there. So definitely go follow them. They have a lot of beautiful pictures and sound samples if you want to uh, watch and see more about their work and what they do. Let's give a huge thank you to Eric. Thank you and a huge applause for him, Songbird Ocarina, and their amazing Ocarina Maker skills. Thank you for being here at the festival and being amazing for showing up and talking to us about your Ocarinas and your story. Thank you so much, Rafan. We'll see you next time. Have a great rest of the Ukraine Best. All righty. Thank you, Eric. See you next time. All right. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you. All righty. So I was going to say to everybody before we log off right here that we will be returning at 5.30 p.m. Central. We will be returning with an amazing concert. And I'll take a minute just to kind of show you guys what um, performers we will be looking at our, and what performers we will be listening to before I log off right here. And like I said, I'm just extremely thankful that you guys are here and I'm extremely thankful for all the people that came through such as Songbird and all our presenters today that gave up their time to do this. Um, like I said, you guys are amazing and I'm just, I'm beyond words. This is one of my favorite events that I host every single year. So I just want to say to everybody, all the presenters, all the attendees, thank you so much. Thank you again. So here is our concert program for tonight. Tonight, we will be listening to these performers. And I do want to say, sadly, due to schedule cancellation and conflict, my friend Louie will not be here at the um, concert uh, at the tonight's concert so I do apologize about that um, I know he's an awesome uh, performer and I'm excited to hear him play another year uh, we'll have to reschedule that for another year we're really thankful um, that we had the opportunity to kind of conversate and work together but at the end scheduling didn't work out so we just had to reschedule for another year uh, so right at 5.30, uh, we'll be hearing Goosephone on Twitch, and I'll be also streaming it here on Zoom. And we'll be hearing right at 6 p.m., we'll be hearing a beautiful concert from Travis. At 6.30, we'll be hearing from Matt. And at 7 p.m., we'll be hearing from Ocarina Girl, all central time. So we are super excited about this, and we will see you there. Does anyone have any questions before we log off and before I end the session? All right, going once, going twice, and we will see you guys there. Check you right at Ocarina Fest concert day number one. Talk to you all then. See you at 530. Bye, everybody.